Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we come in confidence that we're going to be blessed today by your Holy Spirit and your presence amongst us. And we just ask for your healing spirit to be in this place today and to touch the hearts and the bodies of your people who are gathered here today. We're so thankful for each one that's able to be here today, and we ask that your blessing, uh, your presence be so real amongst us this morning as we worship and honor you today, Jesus. Amen. Lord, I just thank you, Lord God, for who you are, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that we can gather together in your name here in this house, Lord, and that we can worship you freely, Lord God, and we understand, Lord God, what that means more than ever, Lord God, with freedoms, Lord God, being tighter and tighter and harder and harder, Lord God, but we know you are in control of everything, Lord God, and we're thankful, Lord, let us worship you in spirit and worship you in truth today, this morning, God. It is well with my soul.
good morning, everybody. I want to talk to you about one aspect of the Christmas story that I really believe is pivotal to the deity of Christ and our faith in the deity of Christ, and that is the virgin birth. And I just want to take a moment and just ask the Holy Spirit to make himself known to us in this word, that it speak to our hearts. Oh God, you sent your son. Lord, I just pray that the presence of the Holy Spirit would be among us this morning. Enable us, Lord, to both deliver the word and to accept it and believe it, just as it was written in Jesus' name. I'm going to start reading in the book of Luke, the first chapter in verse 26. It says, in the sixth month, and that is the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, which is obviously uh, cousin to uh, Mary, the angel, Gabriel, the same angel that came to Elizabeth, this is what it's saying here, and announced, excuse me, he came to Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, and announced the coming birth of John the Baptist. This is the same angel that was sent by God, from God, the scripture says, unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. And he was sent to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and she cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, and he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Verse 33, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which, is, which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God, that holy thing. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing is impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, or here I am. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. I want to look at just a few aspects of this account of the virgin birth. First, a little backstory about espousal. The first chapter of Matthew speaks about espousal or the betrothal of a couple, of Mary and Joseph in particular. And according to the commentary that I read, the Hebrew Talmudic law said that an espousal was the legal binding part of the marriage and that once an espousal had been entered into, the marriage was sealed. It could not be broken except by a formal bill of divorcement. Many scholars believe that Joseph was quite a bit older than Mary. Some even say he was in his 90s, had a whole family and another wife and all of that. 
but most don't agree with that. Most believe that Mary was around 12 when she first became a spouse to Joseph. In other words, when the family said, these two will eventually be married, and then the agreement must be drawn up at that point in time. So from a very young girl, she knew that Joseph was going to be her husband. And commentary agrees that Joseph was probably most commentary, I should say, because there are those others, that Joseph was probably around 20 years old. So he was a bit older than she was, but that was normal for the customs and the time. And most consensus is that Mary was about 14 when the angel came to her and pronounced that Jesus would be born. So the espousal required that an appointee from each of the families of the bride and groom, usually the father, or if the father was not able or alive, the elder brother would serve as the appointee to make the arrangements, to draw up the agreement, and to write the documents. Mary's family was poor. Joseph owned his own business. So the dowry that was drawn up in the agreement must have been pretty substantial because the groom's father was required to pay a dowry to the father of the bride. The idea was for the groom's family to compensate the bride's family for the loss of her domestic services that she had provided in the home. The dowry could have been money, or it could have been gifts, or it could have been a combination of those things. But it was dependent on the family's financial and uh, social status. So, so Joseph's dowry to Mary's father would have been substantial. The law required that fathers obtain the bride's input and her agreement upon all aspects of the terms of the espousal, including the length of the espousal period before the final documents could be executed. The espousal period was commonly between six to 12, excuse me, six to 24 months with 12 months being the average unless one or the other couple had been widowed, in which case the espousal period was automatically set at 30 days. So only when the espousal period was over could the bride physically go home with the groom and live as his wife. So it was during this espousal period that Mary was visited by Gabriel and overshadowed by the Holy Spirit and became pregnant with a child, Jesus. Another very important aspect of this virgin birth is the humanity of Mary and Joseph. Neither were divine, neither were deity, neither were anything other than human flesh and blood. Matthew 1.19 records that because Joseph was a just man, he didn't want to expose or embarrass Mary because she was going to have a baby out of wedlock, though he certainly was entitled to do so by the law. And though the Bible doesn't give us any of these details, one can certainly appreciate the human emotions and the feelings that both Mary and Joseph would have felt. Before he was visited by Gabriel in the dream, Joseph must have felt a sense of betrayal to find out that the wife of his dreams was not who she said she was. And can you just imagine the fear and the shame that Mary might have felt having to face Joseph for the first time ever in the history of the world to explain 
what just happened to her and to have to face her father and Joseph's father and say, well, this is what's happened. Can't even imagine. But I'm thankful that God chose well. And in his well choosing, he prepared them for what was coming. First, sending Gabriel to Mary to explain it to her and to the, assure her that this was God's plan. And then to Joseph to confirm to him that this was also God's plan and that he was to marry Mary, Mary, regardless of what it looked like from a human standpoint. Then the human aspect of this actually giving birth to the Son of God, something no other woman had been asked to do ever before or since. Can you imagine what Mary must have anticipated when she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth to help her out before John the Baptist was born. What emotions must have been going through her? It's also evident that Mary and Joseph, from a human standpoint, might have given up a lot. Joseph was to be the father, earthly father, to a baby that wasn't his. He couldn't even name the child. He had to wait much longer to assume and complete the marriage and live with his wife than he otherwise would have. It all must have looked and felt very strange from the human side. And yet, that very humanity of Mary and Joseph is such a critical fact in the virgin birth because it's what gives it credibility for humans could not possibly pull off such a feat. It had to be God, who in his infinite wisdom chose perfectly both mother and father. He chose Mary, a young, chaste woman who'd not been out in the world, who'd found favor with God by her relationship with him. And she didn't question anything that she was told except for how. How can this be? Because this isn't the normal way. How can this happen? I'm gonna tell you something this morning. I've asked the Lord in the last three years, actually, not just two since Jim's been gone. How, Lord? It's not possible. How? You have to tell me how. You have to show me how. But God in his infinite wisdom knew how. And he knew what would be best for Mary and Joseph and the world. Because through the how, we came to know the redeemer of this world. Matthew 1, 21 through 25 tells us, And she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. God knew how. He knew, even though jo uh, Joseph was a righteous man, he wasn't a sinless man. He lived in the sinful world. Had he sought his own way, had he not submitted to God's plan, all the sin of this world, think about it, by way of a missown seed, a seed out of time, a seed placed where it shouldn't have been, would have contaminated that holy thing, that holy Christ child, the savior of the world. This is not just a love story about a sweet young couple. 
but it's the greatest love story ever told. How a righteous, loving God, full of wisdom, superseded the very boundaries of the humans he created to bring about his perfect plan of salvation. For the Christ child born of a human mother and raised by a human father to redeem this dark and sinful world. It's no wonder we can sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. I want to say at Calvary Temple for all the years I've been here and hopefully for all the years beyond me, we believe in the virgin birth exactly as it was written in this Bible. We believe that it's 100% true and that it is paramount to the plan of salvation which we preach and teach. It's the very foundation of our belief that Jesus, while on this earth, was fully man and fully God. We also believe that God preserved the pure bloodlines that were in both the earthly mother and father. The book of Luke records that Joseph was a direct descendant from the throne of David and that Mary's lineage is traced back to Adam and runs through Abraham, Boaz, and David, fulfilling so many prophecies concerning the birth of Christ. So in closing, without these facts of the virgin birth, without the perfect choice by a perfect God of willing earthly parents, and without the preservation of those pure bloodlines, there wouldn't have been born a sinless, worthy lamb who could pay the ultimate price of a holy life for the redemption of a very unholy world. Yes, it is a love story. God the Father sent his only begotten son whom he said I love to be our redeemer. God knows how, even when we don't. When we can't see a way, God knows how to bring things about. And like I said, his supernatural nature superseded the humanity that he created, and he can do it for us as well. We may not know and understand every fact or detail about how this happened, how the details, I'm a deal, detail person, I love details, but we can thank God that he knew the how. It's a true love story. I just thank the Lord that we can have all confidence in him because he knows the how. I just want to remind you this morning real quickly about the drive for the City Teen Ministries. Thank you, Frida, for bringing yours this morning, and I will make sure that we get it to them. You can pay by cash or check through the church if you'd like. You can go on their website and pay it there, as I said. But please do something by next Sunday or on next Sunday so that we can add to it as a church and we can present them with a wonderful gift. I want to tell you a little bit of a story that happened yesterday about City Team. You could have blown me over with a feather. Yesterday was the day that Mrs. Bugfree was coming out to the church to spray the yard, and so I came down to meet them, and something must have happened because he didn't show up. So after an hour and a half, I decided, well, I'm going to go back home because I had things going on at home. So I left, and I always go the same route, go down Kennedy, turn left or right onto Winchester and left onto my street. And as soon as I turned on my street, there was a great big truck blocking the road. I had to stop because I couldn't see around the truck to see if it was clear to, to go around. So I stopped the, my car, 
and I went around this way just a little bit to see if there was oncoming traffic and there wasn't. So I went by and on the side of the truck, guess what it said? City Team Ministries. I pulled into my driveway and I ran over to the truck and the driver was talking to my across the street neighbor. And I said to the neighbor, David, did you invite City Team Ministries here today? And he said, no, this is my good friend. I've known him for many years, the driver. And I said to the driver, well, you won't believe this, but our church is sponsoring City Team and next week we're having a drive. But I have four huge garbage bags or black bags of items to donate in my dining room. Could I give them to you now? Because they're very heavy. And he, he laughed and he said, well, how heavy are they? And I said, well, they have shoes and purses and coat, four coats and clothes and pillows and all kinds of things. And he said, no problem. So he opened up his truck, he pulled up to my driveway area and opened up his truck and the neighbor and the driver loaded all the bags into the back of the city team truck. I said to the driver, you just don't know what a blessing this is because this was really hard for me to get these down the stairs and I was really not looking forward to loading them in the car. He said, no problem. He said, I really appreciate your support of City Team. And I said, well, we're happy to do that. And he said, I'm a graduate of their program. He said, I've been driving their trucks for several years since I so successfully went through their drug rehabilitation program. And I've been drug free for years now. And this is my little boy and I take him on my routes with me on the, on the weekends when he's not in school. So thank you so much for giving to City Team. I wanted to share that with you. This is no coincidence, no coincidence that the Lord led us to this and had the big old truck blocking the street as I turned the corner to, to go home yesterday. So bring all you can, and if you don't want to bring goods, give all you can. It goes to a worthy cause. I'm here to tell you that for a fact. Will you stand with us this morning, please? Father, how thankful we are that you don't depend on us to come up with the process. You don't depend on us to know how but you equip those that you call to be in your process and you equip us lord i pray oh god that you would help our ears to be open and our hearts to be soft and pliable for when you do call our name we don't worry about the how we can trust in you we can trust lord in your word we don't have to be a Moses that's had so many years of experience of Red Seas and uh, escapes from the Egyptians and such, but we can simply trust in your word. We can simply put our faith in you, knowing that you know how. We ask it, Lord. We pray that you go with each and every one today, O oh God, with your precious Holy Spirit dwelling upon us, O oh God. Lead us and guide us, and Lord, I pray that you would keep us safe from the storm. No damage, Lord, to anybody's house or property or, or belongings or person, O oh God. Keep us safe, and thank you for the rain. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.